Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim, the hematologist in Claremont, California. Today, we will discuss Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma used to be called as a Hodgkin's disease because it was a mysterious disease. Since we have found that it is a kind of B-cell malignant lymphoma, the name has changed to Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma. Thanks to many brilliant hematologists and oncologists, with effective chemotherapy uh, by the name of ABVD, majority of patients uh, are cured and enjoy almost normal lifespan. Let's discuss more in detail and thank you for watching. Hodgkin's lymphoma was first described by Dr. Thomas Hodgkin, a pathologist in London in 1832. And this disease was later named as Hodgkin's disease. It was quite mysterious disease because nobody knew where it originated from. But after it was found that it's a clonal lymphocytic malignant neoplasm, the name was changed to Hodgkin's lymphoma. The hallmark of Hodgkin's lymphoma is the red Sternberg cell. Pathologists couldn't make diagnosis without seeing this cell. Please look at these uh, pictures. It is a uh, large cell having a bilobular nucleus with the uh, peculiar nucleoli, like an owl's eye. But there are other red Sternberg cell variants. Some cells have a uh, single nucleus, so it's called the Hodgkin's lymph uh, cell. Others are la lacunar cell or mummified red Stenberg cells. Initially, Dr. Carl Sternberg discovered this cell in 1898, but he thought it was associated with the uh, tuberculosis. Separately, Dr. Dorothy Reed and Johns Hopkins reported this cell in 1902 and the named as Dorothy Reed cells. But later, this binuclear malignant cell was named as Reed Sternberg cell. So the Hodgkin cell is a variant of Reed Sternberg cell having one nucleus. And uh, some other atypical cells, like uh, lacuna cells, mummified Reed Sternberg cells, are still considered as the uh, 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 diagnostic cells for uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. So all these cells, Reed Stenberg cells, Hodgkin cell, and the other variant cells are all together called HRS cells. Now it's known that 98% of HRS cells are of germinal center B cell origin and the 1 to 2% of T cell origin. But these are uh, HRS cells lose B cell immunophenotypes. Typically, it's CD20 negative. Hodgkin's lymphoma accounts for 10% of all lymphomas, so it's rare. 90% are non Hodgkin's lymphoma. There are two major types classic Hodgkin's lymphoma and the nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma. Most patients have classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. You can find HRS cells. Characteristically, there are uh, CD20 negative, CD45 negative, uh, but CD30 positive, CD15 positive. And the many uh, uh, cells have uh, Epstein-Var virus uh, genes. Nodular lymphocyte predominant uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma has a characteristic, characteristic lymphocyte and the histiocyte cells. It's called LNH cells. It has a popcorn appearance, so it called, it's called the popcorn cells. Uh, characteristically, it is a CD20 positive, CD45 positive, but CD30 negative, CD15 negative, and the Epstein-Barr virus genes negative. So you can distinguish uh, these types by uh, checking that immunophenotypes. The classic Hodgkin's lymphoma has a four subtypes, most commonly nodular sclerosis, uh, mixed cellularity, lymphocyte-rich and the lymphocyte depleted uh, classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. It has a uh, uh, characteristic age distribution. You can see uh, uh, the instance and prevalence common in about 20 to 30 years, and uh, it goes up again in the 70s, 80s. 
Most of time patients present with the asymptomatic lymphadenopathy of the neck area. But about 40% of patients have a B symptoms, fever, weight loss, and night sweats. The enlarged lymph nodes usually in the neck area, uh, cervical and the supraclavicular, but in 50% of patients present with the mediastinal lymphadenopathy. Retroperitoneal accelerated inguinal lymph nodes involvements are rare. Patients may uh, complain itching, and the severe pain after alcohol drinking is a quite characteristic and highly specific symptoms of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, pain in the bone or lymph nodes. It's rare and has no prognostic significance. Bone marrow involvement and the CNA's involvement are rare. Patients may present with a nephrotic syndrome due to minimal change disease. Hypercalcemia is often seen due to increased production of vitamin D3. Eosinophilia uh, can be seen due to increased production of interleukin-5 or eotaxin. For evaluation before therapy, good HMP is important. Lab tests should include the SED rate because SED rate is an important prognostic factor. And uh, uh, HIV hepatitis uh, serology are often ordered because HIV positive patients have high risk of Hodgkin's lymphoma and the hepatitis can be reactivated during therapy. For diagnosis, lymph node biopsy, uh, but not the uh, uh, fine needle aspiration. But sometimes fine needle aspiration is done to rule out head and neck carcinoma. When once it's ruled out, then full tissue biopsy is necessary. For patients with the mediastinal mass, then CT-guided core biopsy is usually done. PET CT is the most important. Those area uh, of positive PET CT uh, need to have a CT scan for the detailed information. For the liver or splenic involvement, MRI scan is much more uh, accurate. Chest X-ray may show the bulky mediastinal disease as shown in this uh, picture. MRI scan of the brain or lumbar puncture for suspicious CNS involvement. And bone marrow biopsy is usually not necessary unless patients have a low, like, a low uh, cell counts and the PET CT is negative for bone marrow involvement. Echocardiogram to check the heart function before cardiotoxic doxorubicin therapy or pulmonary function before pulmonary toxic bleomycin therapy. The staging system is same as non-Hoskins lymphoma. Stage 1 in the one area, stage 2 uh, uh, more than one area on the same side of diaphragm. Stage three, multiple area across the uh, diaphragm. Stage four, involvement to the distant organs. The bulky disease is defined as the mediastinal mass over 10 centimeter or over one third of maximum intrathoracic diameter. Patients with the early stages are uh, categorized to two different groups, favorable prognosis group and the unfavorable prognosis group. What makes the unfavorable uh, uh, prognosis? Uh, age over 50 years, bulky mediastinal lymphadenopathy, sed rate uh, over 50 millimeter per hour or over 30 when the patients have B symptoms, or more than four regions of involvements make the uh, unfavorable prognosis group. For unfavorable prognosis group patients, typically we give a ABBD uh, two to three cycles followed by a radiation therapy. But when the patients are young women who need to avoid the radiation to the breast, then uh, simply give a ABBD for four to six cycles. Some experts use the PET scan after two cycles of ABBD, and then depending on the results, uh, we'll give a more uh, ABBD or add the uh, radiation therapy. For unfavorable prognosis group, typically AVBD four cycles followed by radiation therapy is uh, used. But uh, uh, we can also use the PET scan after two cycles AVBD and depending on the results of PET scan, uh, further treatment or adding uh, radiation therapy uh, will be decided. For unfavorable patients without bulky adenopathy, uh, typically, we give ABBD two cycles and to do the PET scan, depending on the results, give either uh, more uh, ABBD and uh, add the uh, radiation therapy. Treatment for advanced stages. Some experts treat stage 2 bulky disease or stage 2 on both sides of diaphragm as advanced stages. Uh, after two cycles of ABBD, PET-CT should be done to see the response. If the dubious score is a negative, 
uh, then uh, give a four more cycles of AVD without pleomycin or AVD uh, followed by uh, radiation therapy for high risk area like uh, bulky areas. If it's a double score positive, then escalate to a stronger BCOP chemotherapy when the patients are young. But if they are older, uh, then just give AVVD two more cycles, then do another PET scan to see the response. If it's negative, to give the same uh, chemo for two more cycles with or without radiation therapy. If it's a still positive, then you have to do the biopsy and then, uh, and then decide what to do next. Treatment for pregnant woman uh, needs the MRI scan instead of PET scan to avoid the radiation. For first trimester diagnosis, wait until second trimester and give ABBD chemotherapy. When the diagnosis is made during second trimester, you can give ABBD. Uh, when diagnosis is made during third trimester, wait until uh, a baby is delivered and then do the full staging and treatment. Patients need to be monitored during and after treatment. Uh, especially one month after completion of therapy, PET CT scan should be done. PET CT is not 100% perfect. It has a 10 to 20% false negative rate and 40% false positive rate. In other words, even patients have a negative PET scan after treatment, 10 to 20% of them uh, will recur. But the good news is, even patients have a positive PET scan after treatment, 40% of them will never recur. So when the patients have a positive PET scan after treatment, uh, don't get discouraged. Don't rush to give uh, salvage uh, treatment because 40% will, will, will be a false positive result. So always do the biopsy before proceeding salvage therapy. Most patients will be cured with the initial therapy, but 10 to 15% of early stage and 15 to 30% of advanced stage patients relapse. Then we use the salvage therapy, including ICE, GBD, GDP, DHEB regimen. And the recently, uh, brentuximab, betotin, uh, and uh, immunotherapy with the Optivo and uh, Keytruda are promising. And the autologous stem cell transplantation is also uh, recommended if eligible, but be careful. Uh, you have to do the bone. Uh, you have to do the tissue biopsy before proceeding this uh, this salvage therapy because PET CT scan have a 40% false positive rate. Even after the relapse, about 50% of patients uh, uh, have a long-term survival. Prognosis of classic Hodgkin's lymphoma is good. Patients with early stage have over 90% five years relative survival rates. Prognosis of advanced stage depends on international prognostic scores, IPS. This has a, a seven factors. Uh, when they belong to these factors, we give a one point. For example, if the patients are male, one point, or age uh, 50, is another point, so point 0.2, or white blood cells over uh, 20,000, then uh, point 0.3. Then the patients have a, a three points. Then three points, five-year five overall survival is 88%. But in general, it's pretty good, except the patients have a very uh, poor prognostic factors. Because nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma is a very rare, uh, there is no consensus in terms of treatment. Uh, for early stage without B symptoms or bulky, without bulky disease, uh, just radiation therapy or just simple uh, active surveillance without treatment or even surgical resection can be done. Symptomatic patients or patients with a bulky disease, then chemoimmunotherapy or radiation therapy uh, is the uh, treatment of choice, but not the combined modality to minimize toxicity. For advanced stages, chemoimmunotherapy uh, is usually given. Chemoimmunotherapy includes RCVP, BR, RCHOP, but ABVD is, a, is an option, but it's considered too toxic for this type of lymphoma. Prognosis of nodular lymphocyte predominant lymphoma is pretty good, but about 15 to 30 percent of patients relapse. But even they again respond well to further therapy. 
Most early disease patients have a 90% complete remission rate. Uh, Progression-free survival at four years uh, is over 90% uh, when patients have favorable early stages. Uh, even unfavorable early stage patients have uh, almost 90% of uh, progression-free survival. And advanced stage, 77% of progression-free survival. Thank you for watching.